Hello, and welcome to uh, RPG Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about arrays, how to use arrays in RPG Maker. There's going to be three parts to this. First, we're going to be going over some uh, common array calls, uh, scripting calls that you might need to do. Uh, this will be using scripting, but no plugins required. So we'll be going over some of the scripting calls that we need for this. Second, I will actually be making a demonstration showing uh, making an array with the numbers 1 to 5 in a random order and how you might do that. And finally, I'm going to demonstrate something from my own project, which is sort of that, but scaled up. So showing you how you can do some, some cool stuff using uh, randomized arrays. All right, so first, in order to access scripting, you're going to need to access variables. So let's create an event. Uh, this is all going to be done through eventing. Uh, we'll just uh, take this girl here. It's fine. And first thing that we're going to want to do Advanced script. So I have everything written out over here, uh, making uh, easy reference. Uh, quick tip for anybody trying to do programming, I do not recommend memorizing everything. You want to reference things because it'll make things easier. Know where to look things up, not where to <clears throat> memorize everything. Okay, so uh, here we're going to go game variables. Set, set value. We're going to have something like this. This is your basic uh, way of creating a variable that, or uh, putting a value into a variable. So for this purpose, we're going to be using primarily uh, variable 20, variable 20, and we're going to make it equal to 5. And then just to show that we have this, we can use this little uh, text showing thing. And again, if you um, Highlight over here, it'll give you a bunch of control characters. So it's backslash v, square brackets, n. In our case, n is 20. That is the name of the variable. This is set, a, set variable using scripting. v20 equals that. Good. talk to the girl. The variable using scripting, v20 equals 5, not 0, because the script ran correctly. Uh, on its own, you may be asking, like, why bother? You can just go control variable, set variable uh, 8. Let's do that. And this will have Pretty much the same effect. But the variable menu, oops, the variable menu, yes, as it worked, worked, prop, uh, worked properly, but the uh, variable menu in the event system does not allow you to use arrays. Uh, an array, I just kind of assumed that anybody watching this knows what an array is, but uh, an array is basically a sequence of variables that are all stored together in a single place. So let's get uh, let's get into that. I'll type it all out manually just so that I don't go too fast. So we're going to initialize this variable as an array. So first, uh, dollar sign in variables uh, set value. That variable ID is going to be twenty, and then in square brackets. You can put as many elements in here as you want. I'm just going to go like this, 0, 1, 2. This is going to create an array of size 3. This array will have three indices. Index 1 or index 0 will be have the value of 0. Index 1 has the value of 1. Index 2 has the value of 2. Because in computer programming, we start counting from 0. I think in most cases. There are probably ex examples of computer programming where you would count, start counting from 1. Um, but uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm sure they exist, though. Initialize array using scripting. OK. Now uh, we don't need this. It's fine. She's going to get way too much text if we have all the examples stacked all up all at once. 
So talk to her, set variable using scripting, so variable 20 equals 5. Or if we use the array call that I did, we now have variable 20 equals 0, 1, and 2, depending on which index of the array that we're looking at. Good. So, so far, so far, so good. So next, let's store a value in that array. I'm going to script again. And in this case, let's make index 0 equal to 12. Uh, no, 33. Make it different digits than what we have here. So we'll make it equal to 33. So dollar sign in variables dot value. So this is 20, is the variable that we're storing the array in. Uh, worth noting, when you're working with um, arrays, you use value instead of set value. So make sure that you're using the right syntax for what you're trying to do. So game variables value 20, and then in here we're going to put 0. That is index 0. So currently we had 0, 1, 2. This is index 0. We want this to be equal, and uh, what did I say, 33? Let's try that. Uh, hold on. Uh, that's fine. We need, we need to actually output the, uh, the results, otherwise we won't be able to see what we've done. So 0, 1, 2, and then we change the first value to 33, 33, 1, 2. Okay. Good. So again, game vari uh, dollar sign game variables dot value, uh, capitalization is important, so dollar sign game variables dot value. 20 is the variable that we're storing the array in. This is the zeroth index of that array, and we're putting a value into that. Okay. Uh, so looking here, you can see we can also put a value from a variable into that. So let's quickly use temp here, the temp variable. Make this have a value of 54, why not? And then going into scripting, so dollar sign game variables dot value. Variable 20, which is our array, and then we're going to go with the next next number over, so index 1, and we're going to make this have a value. Green variable dot value, and we're going to take, uh, what was the temp? Temp is 1. Temp is 1. Okay. Temp is variable 1. Also very handy to have all your variables written out as a reference so that you know what you're working with. Otherwise, things will go horrendously wrong. All right, so this, what this should do, is change the first index into the value that we've stored in the temp variable. Open again. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about changing the message. I'm just going to be deleting all of these in a moment anyway. Talk to her. So set the variable, it's fine. So made an array. Initialize the array 33. And put 54 into a variable and then input that variable input into the into the array, into the index that we wanted. Excellent. Everything is working. Working just fine. So next, we're going to next thing I'm going to demonstrate here. I think this is uh getting a bit cluttered. Let's um now ah, we can, uh, I'm going to keep that text because that's useful. So the next thing that we're going to do is set variable temp equals zero. And that's just to demonstrate that the scripting will be changing what is in the temp value. So scripting, we want Let's make our 
make our array set value 20 because that's what we have for the variable and inside no that's not a dollar sign there we go team variables dot set value so make one to finish it off and in here 23, 46, and 86. So we're going to put those as our starting values for the array. So this will read array contents. This will read the contents of the array. So we have, we have a variable, which has a value of 0. Let's make it equal to this final value here. So to do that, get value from array, dollar sign game variables dot set value. And this time we are setting the temp variable. So we're not setting the array. We're, we're getting the number out of the array, but we're putting it into our temp variable. Temp variable, which is variable one, dollar sign game variables dot value. And this is where we grab the array, which is 20. And we want 0, 1, 2. We want the last number. So that's going to be index 2. And then this is probably just closing up all of the brackets and stuff, right? Yeah. Make sure we've got all that, got the semicolon. So here's our array. And here is variable one. It should be the last value in that array. So 23, 46, 86, we initialize the array correctly. And we have grabbed the last value of the array and put it into this variable. Excellent. So far, so good. Uh, get value from array, store value in array. We've done that. Get value from array and store it in the array. Okay, so we're going to do both of these things simultaneously now. This is just kind of an expansion on what we've been doing. So in this case, let's make the third value. Let's overwrite this third value with the first value at this point. Uh, no, don't copy. We're going to write it out slowly. So we have spelling. Spelling issues is what we have. Game variables dot value. 20 is the variable for the array. The index that we want to change is the first value, which is index 0. And we want to make this equal to, uh, whoops. I was questioning the point of the Windows key on the keyboard. Why why does this exist? Uh, game variables value. And so right, game variables, so we're taking variable 20, index 0, and we want it to be equal to the same thing, but index 2. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, game variable dot value variable index game variable dot value variable index semicolon. Yeah, looks correct to me. Uh, RPG Maker is nice enough to usually tell you if you have a syntax error, it'll just give you an error and then quit the program. So it's uh, pretty good about letting you know when you've screwed things up. All right, uh, that's fine. We'll go with those. I guess we don't need to see the variable at the end, but that's fine. Just the array. Our array 234686. Yeah, read the uh, variable here. Uh, invalid or unexpected token. Oh wow, it's almost like I planned that. I did not. I do not like making mistakes in my coding. It's always a pain to find them. So it did read up to here fine. Uh, game variables not value. Is there a spelling mistake? Uh, no, there's a. It's not a dollar sign. Okay, try that again. Test your code frequently. The longer you go between testing, the harder it'll be to find your mistake. Okay, so 23, 46, 86. 
86, 46, 86. Perfect. So it did what I thought. Did what I wanted it to do. Final value was taken and written into the first slot. Okay. And I think that's everything, actually, for the first part of this. So before we go on to the second part, where I create a random... I create an array with five numbers in random order. Uh, first, I want to show how to create a random number using a scripting call. If you go in here, uh, control variable, there is a random option. So you can create it that way. But if we need to be doing an operation on... or we need to be storing values into an array, we can't use that. We have to use the script. So we're going to go script. And here we're going to go dollar sign. Yes, it is a dollar sign. Good. Name? No, no, no. In variables dot set value. And let's make that temp variable, the variable one. Math dot random int. Now let's go with five. Okay. So this should generate a random integer from zero to five and store it in variable one. All right, and if we do this again, we should now have a random number. Random from zero to five. And again, we're getting we're getting a bit much in here because we don't want to go through all this every single time. Uh, in fact, in fact, let's just delete that too. There we go. So just dem demonstrating math thought random. Don't need to see it in an in an array right away. So variable one equals four, click on her again, equals three, zero, three, two, two, yep, we keep doing this. I am actually curious, this might not be able to generate a five, which is why I'm continuously clicking on this. Um, better, quicker way of checking that. So I'm not entirely sure, let's go from zero to one. And let's see if it always gives us the same value. Was it always zero, or do we sometimes get a one out of this? Zero. Zero. Yeah, looks like it doesn't give the maximum. Yeah. Either we got incredibly unlucky, or it will not actually go to the upper limit. So that's the uh, random, the random call. Now we're going to make an array using this. This is going to be quite complicated. I don't need to create a new character since I can just start over here. This is going to be quite complicated. As you can see, we're going to be using six different variables for this. So we're going to have 20. 20 is going to be our uh, setup array. So we're going to actually have two arrays here. Now, 19 is ultimately what we want. 19 is going to have the values from 1 to 5 in a random order going to be of length 5. Variable 20 is going to be another array that we're going to use to help us generate array 19. These other values I'll talk uh, talk more about as we get into it, but for now let's just start with the scripting. So let's generate, uh, initialize our two arrays. Variables.setValue. value. So 19, this is the output that we want. Doesn't matter what values I put in here. Something like that. Well, exactly that. Uh, game variables, set value. So this is the array that we're going to use to help us generate the random array, and it does matter what values we put in here. So we're going to put 1 to 5 like this, because these are the values that we want to ultimately put into into 19. And in fact, uh, just to make this more explicit, uh, let's just do this. We'll initialize this to an array of size 5 with or length 5 with 0 and everything. 
that way, if we get any zeros in our output, we know that it didn't record, or didn't overwrite properly. So there's no confusion there. You can do multiple scripting things. I could have, alternatively, I could have just done two separate scripts for two different lines, but this works fine too. Uh, control variables is not a script, so we have to break up the script now. Control variable, and we're going to go with counter. So what the counter is going to do is it's going to count the size of the array that we're currently looking at. Or another way of saying that, how many values do we still need to put into our array? So initially, constant 4 because index 4, so we need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So index 4 is the final index that we're interested in at the moment, so that's why counter equals 4 to start. It's the final index of array 20. Okay, next we're going to create a loop. And this loop is going to look through this array, pick a random value from the array, input it into array 19, which is where we want our output to be, and then um, and then it will cut off, so it'll, it won't actually do this, but it, it'll, because of the way I'm writing the loop, it will ignore the last digit in the array on the second time through the loop. And then the third time through, it'll ignore the last two digits and it'll keep, so it'll keep uh, shrinking essentially the size of this array in order to eventually get through all of the values and put them all in here. So there's a little bit of math and magic we need to do to get that to work. Uh, starting with some scripting calls, of course. And I do, um, I tried explaining this to myself out loud earlier, and it was a big mess. So I do have a diagram that I will be using uh, to help explain it once I've written out what we're doing here to explicitly explain what's going on. Uh, math.random, random int. So what we're doing here is in variable four, which is our array index. Uh, so what we're doing right now, mm, okay, I'll, write, I'll finish writing out this one line of code and then I will explain what it does. I think that's probably the best way to do this. Make sure you have all the closing brackets. We've got one, two, one, two, three. I missed something. Uh, random int. Yes, that's what I get for talking while coding at the same time. Dollar sign name variables dot value. Uh, oops, not dot value value. Two, okay. So game variables dot set value four. So variable four, which is our index array. Uh, random int variable value 2, 2 is our counter. So as I demonstrated earlier with the math.randomInt, uh, the value that we put in here, which is going to be 4 in this case, uh, is the upper limit. So this is going to generate a random value between 0 and 3. Oh no, and right away I'm starting to think there might actually be a bug in my code. Um, so it's from 0 to 3. Well, I know the code more or less works, so we'll go through it and we'll do some troubleshooting at the end. How's that? Pretty exciting. Uh, game variables. OK, so here's my diagram. So game variable set 4, value 4. 2. 2 is currently equal to the size of the array, which is uh, 5, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, I am really second-guessing myself here now. The scary thing is, is that I know that this works when I, um, when I ran it earlier, so it might just not be completely random. Unfortunately, I do need to write this all out in order to test things. Uh, 6 is the value taken from the array.
variables dot value and we want uh, from variable four, right? Does that look the same? New variables dot value 20. So this is our temporary. We're taking the value from the random position that we've just generated on the previous line. Okay. That looks good. Um, I'm just going to output all of the variables right now because I'm curious. Nineteen, these are two arrays. And then two, three, four, and six are the other ones that we use. All right, let's just look at what we've got so far. Uh, break loops so they don't have an infinite loop and this thing will actually run. What happens if I do this? And that's what happens, of course it is. Looks like we need a closing bracket there for that matching up. Matching up our parentheses. Try that again. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, zero, 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 as expected, four, nineteen, one, two. That's great, but um, I should have done this so that I can more easily see. Which variables go where? Okay, so the counter is currently four. Zero, one, two, three, four. That's because that's the final in entry in the index. Inverted counter equals 19. Uh, that's just because I set that somewhere else in this program. I haven't reset it yet. So that doesn't have any meaning yet. Array index equals zero and value taken from array equals one. So index was zero. Uh, value at zero is one. So that seems to be working properly. Okay. Doesn't answer the question of whether I'm. It's possible to have uh, the final, the final digit, but we can look at that in a moment. Okay. So now we're going to control some variables. Inverted counter. So the counter, what it's doing is it's going from the final digit. Uh, so. We have length four, length three, um, four, that's the problem, potentially. Length five, length four, length three, length two, length one. That's kind of the idea, four, three, two, one, zero. And the inverted counter is going to be counting up instead, zero, one, two, three, four. And this is going to be necessary for something that we're going to be doing uh, after. So currently, we'll set it to, to get it to do what we want. We set it to be equal to counter. Subtract four from it, multiply it by negative one. And the point of this, so the counter initially is four, right? Index four. So four minus four equals zero. Multiply that by negative one, it's still zero. That gets us position zero. Second time through the loop, we're going to decrease the counter by one. The counter will be 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Multiply by negative 1 gives us positive 1, which is index 1. And then 
and so on. So we have 2 minus 4 is negative 2 times negative 1 equals 2. So 2, 2, 1, 3, 0, 4. So inverted counter is always going to be the opposite of counter. This value, minus 4, has to be equal to the initial value of counter. Otherwise, this won't work. OK. So finally, do some more scripting. And this is the complicated stuff, which is where the diagram is going to come in. So our output. We want to write a value into our output. This is the whole point of this, this process. In variables dot value three. So our index is going to be the inverted counter. So we're counting up from zero. So this is going to be starting at zero for the first time through the loop. And then this is going to be equal to. And this is just going to be the value that we're taking out of the array. Yeah. Variables.value uh, should be should be good. Okay. Oops. More. Here I thought by planning everything out in advance, I'd be able to get away with not doing troubleshooting, same way that back when I used to stream RPG Maker development, I think I spent a couple hours um, troubleshooting a single bug one time. That was exciting. So I was hoping to avoid doing that, but I have a feeling that my code that kind of works doesn't actually work the way I want it to. Okay, so game variables dot value in this case. We're taking uh, array index, which is the value. This is where we found the value. So let's say, okay, well, let's not let's say. Let's finish the code, finish the line, and then we'll go into the let's says. Uh, so this is going to be in variables dot value, and this is going to be a counter, right? Yes. Do need another, do not, do not need another parentheses here, okay. Okay, so this last one. Uh, let's explain this using some examples. So first time through the code. Um, there, you can see it nicely from here. So we have initialized, we've initialized our, well, these are actually all zeros which is fine, 0, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is such a, such a mess. So since I changed these to zeros, let's just, let's just do this properly. Maybe just maybe a bigger. Bigger eraser, it's fine. These pixels don't matter. They don't matter. Okay. They don't have to be pretty, just draw your zeros. Okay, so we have zeros in here. Currently, this is the state of our arrays, right? 1920. 19 has been initialized to all zeros, 20 has been initialized to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Variable 2 equals 4. 2, v2 equals 4. Uh, v2 is the index that we're looking at, the maximum index. So now we have v4 is going to equal a random value from 0 to 4, although I think this is actually doing 0 to 3, so I'm going to have to modify my code. So 
let's say it ends up equaling 2. The random value from 0 to 4, or 0 to 3, so let's say it equals 2. This equaling 2 then means variable 6 is going to look at uh, variable, looks at variable 20, position of variable 2, which is 2, so 0, 1, 2. So variable 6 now equals 3. Print out the text, this doesn't matter, so don't do anything. Control variables, inverted counter. Okay, so we have the final one, variable three, which is right down here, equals two, which is four, minus four, which is zero, times negative one, still zero. So variable three equals zero. Okay, next, game variable 19, value of index three, uh, index variable three, which is zero, so that's the first value here. Change our color from white, so we're going to have, right, so array 19 from variable three as the index, which is going to be zero, so first, in, first index equals this value. So this becomes I think crossing out just makes it harder to read. Let's just go three. There's a three here. This is now three. Then we look at array 20 from position four, which is two. So zero, one, two. So here's the three, the three that we just transferred over. And we make this equal to Uh, array 20, position of variable 2, which is 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We take this value, and we're writing this value into it. So this now is no longer 3. This is now 5. Okay. So that's what these two script calls here are doing. So we're leaving us in a place like this. And that's OK, because now control variable counter decrement by 1. We're going to reduce the value of counter and go through the loop a second time. Uh, the if statement is just when we end the loop, so I won't, don't worry about that just yet. So let's go back to back to this. And so this time now, We've taken variable two and subtracted one, so this is now a three. And assume that the if statement, whatever, we haven't broken the loop yet, so we're gonna go back to the start, the loop, and do this all over again. So variable four equals math.random. This time it's a random value from zero to three, although again, I think it's gonna be off at one. So let's go with zero this time. We'll say that we randomly got a zero. Variable six is equal to 20 index zero. All right, this index. So variable six is going to be equal to one. Inverted counter. So we now start from three. Minus four is negative one. Times negative one gives us a positive one. In variable 19 in array 1, 0, 1. So this array equals the value in here, which is 1. Next line, array 20, position variable 4, which is 0. So this, this spot, this value is equal to the value in 2, which is the last one. So 0, so zero 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we take this one, 0, 1, 2, 3. So this value is now 4. And hopefully, as you can see, uh, because the variable, the random variable here, is getting smaller each time, it's impossible to access the indices for previous parts of the cycle. So this 4 and this 5 
will be unavailable the next time through the loop. Just like this time through the loop, the 5 was unavailable. And again, where I think the error in my current code might be is that I think we're actually going one too low. So 5 might have been unavailable from the start. And that's a quick fix at the very end. So anyway, that's what this, uh, that's what the code does. And it keeps doing that until our counter is a negative number. So let's add that in here. Uh, conditional branch, if variable counter is less than zero. Why not drag and click? Okay. I guess I can't do that. Break loop. And repeat above. Okay. So this should be done now. With that. Feet above, and that's the end of my, my script there. All right. If we talk to her, team variables is not a function. We have an error. Of course we do. Uh, game variables is not a function. Did I have a typo somewhere? This code, I'm guess, like I said, this was working last time I ran this. I have done this before. This part was working before, so it has to be in these last two lines. What was that error message again? Dollar sign game variables. No, spelling is fine. Game variables not value 19, index game variables not value 3, equals game variables not value 6. Game variables not value 20, index game variables not value 4, equals game variables not value 20. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, okay, uh, there were no errors. That is good. Um, show text. So what I want to do here is variable 19 equals This is our output array. That's what we care about. It should be five numbers randomly from one to five. Three, five, two, one, four. Four, one, five, three, two. Two, three, five, one, four. Four, three, five, two, one. Five, three, four, one, two. Okay, so it seems to be working properly. So the thing that I was worried about, if the if the math thought random isn't working, is that it should be impossible for the first variable to ever be a 5. Hmm. I guess it's fine. I don't know. All that second guessing is going to make me look rather silly in this video, isn't it? OK, well, in any event, um, We have a random array that's generating numbers from 0 to 5, or from 1 to 5. So if we talk to this guy over here, level 1 room array is. So I'm going to show something that I've uh, managed to implement in my project. I have a random array here of length 20. Um, so if we go into the dungeon, we are at this location. And this is a randomly generated dungeon. No plugins required. This is all, all just done with eventing. 
Let's just wander around a little bit. Oh, I found a tablet. It was up as a book on the map. Dead end. Uh, whoops. That's accuracy. Not on point today. Let's do a peek into a few more rooms. Oh, there's some treasure, which was up as a coin. Oh, there's a statue. And we'll just look in this one room on the other side of the stairs. I was afraid that was going to happen. Ah, uh, it's, it's a dead end. Okay. Like down to dead end, an empty room. Oh, there's the stairs down. And just a quick proof of concept. Hey, look, we started in a different spot. Treasure here. So this is a notebook is in this corner this time. This was an empty room before. Oh, this is actually a very good corner. So you can see the dungeon is randomly generated. This is a uh, oh, boss room. And this is just using the, the random array to, well, I'd say just using. There's there's a lot that went into this. But this is just an example of something that you can do using the random array. Store a whole bunch of data in order to create a random a randomized dungeon. I think this is pretty cool. And that's going to be it for, uh, for this video. I don't really have any plans to do any additional RPG Maker content. This is just something that I had uh, promised people I would do probably over a year ago, and finally getting around to it. So this is the RPG Maker Array Tutorial. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'll do something again in the future. If so, I will see you then.